Well, hello. Um, I have decided, um, it was suggested that pastors, we are heading up to Reformation Sunday. Uh, we should do um, some devotionals that highlights the uh, essentials of the Reformation movement. And I thought, well, this is not a bad idea. So this is the first of it um, for today, Monday. So uh, with the Lord's help, um, we will do five uh, devotionals as we head up to um, Reformation Sunday. Um, at Shiloh, uh, from since we began, we have commemorated the Reformation Sunday um, essential because we are a Protestant church, um, which is a product of the Reformation movement. Um, and so in case you do not know, Reformation Day or Reformation Sunday, but rather Reformation Day um, is actually October 31st. Um, and it, 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 it commemorates the day when uh, Martin Luther, a German monk, um, nailed his 95 thesis um, to the door of the Wittenberg uh, church um, that was in, 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 in the year 1517. Um, and so that act of Luther is commemorated as the, um, the official starting point, um, of the, of the, of the Reformation. And so from 1567, uh, um, the church or the early church or Christians have commemorated Reformation Day. Um, the impact of of uh, of Luther, Martin Luther, and the Protestant Reformation has been enormous on global Christianity. Um, and when we think of it in contrast to the, um, how do I say this, to the extra biblical traditions. Uh, when we think of it in contrast to the the works-based practices of the main religious organization of the day, um, uh, what Luther was doing was he was calling the church back to the good news of salvation um, by grace alone, through faith alone, as we find um, in, in the book of Ephesians. As a, matter, as a matter of fact, I can read that to you. And this is really what was that and this is important for us as protestants to understand that um that um uh, luther uh, was 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 incensed by the extra biblical things the traditional stuff the the works based practices and 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 he felt motivated um to to call the church back to the good news of salvation um a salvation that is by grace alone through faith alone and if we were to look at um ephesians chapter 2 um uh verse 8 and uh, verses 8 and 9 um it says for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of god not by works so that no one can boast should christians do good works yes because we are saved, not to be saved. And this is important uh, to understand that. So, so, so at the heart of the Protestant Reformation, and, 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 and especially I speak to those of you who belong to Shiloh, I want you to know what your church is about. I want you to know why, why we do what we do, some of the things. Why are some Sundays different? Why the colors and why all these things? Um, uh, one of the things is this Reformation idea. And, and so at the heart of the Protestant Reformation, there were four basic questions that were being asked. One, how is a person saved? Uh, the second question was, where, where does religious authority lie? Listen, these are important things that affects how we live out our faith. You know, how am I saved? By works? Do my good works save me? Um, and, and the issue of religious authority. The reason why this answers the question 
why it's very important for us that we're not a non-denominational or independent church. Whilst we are governed and we have we have a right to our own governing system, but we are part of a denomination. We do belong to something bigger than ourselves, um, which is the, the, the Methodist movement, which is the, the holiness movement. And so these are questions that was being asked during the Protestant, uh, at the, that was at, rather at the heart of the Protestant Reformation. How is a person saved? Where does religious authority lie? What is the church? That was a very important question. What is the church? That's also an important question that was being asked. And another question that was at the heart of the Protestant Reformation was, was and, and, and it, it continues probably, I'm hoping that we still ponder on it, is what is the essence of Christian living? And and so the reformers, in answering these questions, they developed what is known as the five solas. And, and sola uh, is a Latin word for alone. And so these uh, five essential points, these became five essential points or doctrines of the Protestant Reformation. So, so, so there were five essential points of the Reformation. One, sola scriptura. Um, scripture alone. Two, sola gracia, salvation by grace alone. Three, sola fide, salvation by faith alone. The fourth one was solus Christus, in Christ alone. And then the fifth one was soli deo gloria. So these, these, these became the five um, doctrines, the five um, essential pillars. Uh, you know how Methodism, Methodism has four pillars. These became the five essential pillars um, of the Reformation movement. Um, you know, sort of like when you come to Shiloh, there are four pillars on which Shiloh stands. Salvation, holiness, fellowship, very important. Salvation, holiness, uh, fellowship, and discipleship. There's four pillars upon which Shiloh is being built. Salvation, holiness, fellowship, and discipleship. Um, it is the same idea. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's where I gleaned the idea from. The, the Methodism stands on pillars, um, um, and, uh, and, and, and the Reformation movement stood on these four pillars. Uh, scripture alone, um, salvation by grace alone, salvation by faith alone, um, uh, in Christ alone, and soli deo gloria for the glory of God alone. So what I will endeavor to do for the next uh, five days is each day pick one of those solas and just talk about it. And, and the first sola, the first essential foundation pillar of the Reformation movement was sola scriptura, um, scripture alone. Here's a lot that I can say about that, but it was meant to be a devotional. When you, um, at the beginning, there was this, this song that played by Martin Luther, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Um, the word of God is the only authority for the Christian faith. The word of God is the only authority for the Christian faith. Traditions are valid. Believe you me, at Shiloh, if you come here, we have several traditions. They are valid only when they are based on scripture and are in full agreement with scripture. Any tradition that contradicts the Bible are not of God and are not a valid aspect of the Christian faith. Sola Scriptura is, is I believe, the only way to avoid personal opinions and uh, subjectivity from taking priority over the teachings of the Bible. So the, 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 what am I saying? I'm saying that this, the, the early reform or the reformers were saying that the essence of, of sola scriptura, the essence of, of scripture alone, the essence of this pillar is, is that we ought to base our spiritual life on the Bible alone that we must reject any teaching or any tradition that is not in full agreement with the Bible. You know what it says, most of us who are Christians, we know what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of God. 
the church has been reformed. I believe, I believe, and I believe, and I believe with all my heart that the Lord is raising up some people at Shiloh um, to be revolutionaries. The church has been reformed. What the church needs now is a revolution still standing on these pillars. Scripture alone. This is the one we're looking at today. The revolution that the church needs because of the reformation that the church has had. There's a scripture that is essential. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12 says this. The word of God. As a matter of fact, all of Hebrews chapter 4, but, but, but we will focus on verse 12 for the purpose of this devotional. It says this. The word of God is alive and active. The church has been reformed with this concept in mind. That the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. I, I, I wish we can, we, can, we, we can get the power of the word of God. We, we treat it callously, I believe, as Christians. You know, it, one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite times in the church, one of my favorite days um, is the Reformation, because I, 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 I believe with all my heart that the transformation that the reformers brought to the world is the revolution that God is calling us to bring to the world now. I believe that a revolution will continue the work of the reformers. When I read passages like this, and I, I've, I've, I've read and I've studied about, about Martin Luther, and, and one, things that I, one thing that I heard, sorry, that I read, was that one day he found a discarded Bible in the monastery where he was. He was a monk. And he began to read that Bible. You see, I grew up for many years in a denomination where I didn't read directly the Word of God. And I had a life change when I began to read the Word of God. Hence the reason why I am Pastor Joel. Hence the reason why before Pastor Joel, I am a born-again Christian. Because I had an encounter with God based on the Word of God. Luther read the word of God for himself. And as he began to read it, the, the word of God grew like a seed in his heart. And out of that came the reformation. Out of Luther reading the word of God for himself came a world transforming movement. I wonder, this is, this. we're talking about the Reformation. I wonder if there's more to it. If you were to read the word of God for yourself, out of that, could that come a family transforming movement? Out of the word of God, as you begin to read it for yourself, as you build, if you base your life solely on the word of God, could it transform your marriage, your singlehood, your finances, your family, your, your sense of purpose, your sense of joy and happiness? Because Luther read it and out of the word of God, came a world transforming movement the word of god has not changed it still has the power to transform lives this passage hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 is one of the key uh, uh, verses in the foundation of the reformation movement especially on the first sola sola scriptura scripture alone and imagine how the word of God is described as a sh uh, it, it said it's sharp, it's powerful, it's a precise blade, it divides truth. Truth from what? From the lies, the downputting, the negativity, from the rebellious lies that we harbor in our hearts. You want to get that out? It's the word of God. Beloved, only the word of God has the power to do the impossible. Listen to me. Only the word of God, not the traditions of the church. Only when we base our lives on the word of God, not the traditions of the church, not the great preaching and the insightful and motivational preachings of the pastor. No, if he's not preaching the word of God, it's a waste of time. It will not last. 
Only the word of God has the power to bring about true change. Run from it, deny it, disobey, but it still stands. It is still true. Something I've always treasured in my heart for years that Luther said. Here's what he said. A simple layman armed with scripture is greater than the mightiest pope without it. A simple layman, not a preacher who knows all the scripture, a simple layman armed with scripture is greater than the mightiest pope without the word of God. When speaking about the Reformation that he had initiated, Luther said this. He said, I, I did nothing. The word of God did everything. Wow. That's challenging even for me as a pastor. I put the effort into practicing all the things you learn in hermeneutics and homiletics and all this stuff. Um, but, but it's the word. My prayer is that it will be the word of God that will bring about change. I want the word of God to be what brings about change in your family in your life, but you have to build your life on the word of God. You have to give the word of God the attention. You have to give the word of God the place that it deserves in your life if it's going to bring about change. Why? Because God's word, what do I mean by God's word? The Bible, God's word, the Bible has a precision and a power you will find nowhere else. Sometimes people would come to church and, or I would call and they would say, Pastor, it's like you were reading my mail. No, I wasn't reading your mail. I wasn't reading it. But the Holy Spirit knows exactly what we need. And that's why we preach exactly. We try to preach what the Holy Spirit says because he knows what we need. And the scripture is clear. The, the, the word of God has a precision and a power that we will find nowhere else. So friends, as we prepare for Reformation Sunday, by the way, I hope you plan to come to church. The link goes live in two days. Um, make it a priority. Make the word of God a priority in your life this week. When you let the word of God be a priority, it will become active in you. Do you let the word of God be active in you? Do you let it influence your thinking, your doing? Read the word of God with an open heart. Allow the, the words of scripture to form the words that come out of your mouth. Allow the word of God to shape the actions that you take, to influence the choices that you will make. Because only by living and knowing God's word, only by living out and by knowing God's word, will we really be able to please him and serve him in our daily lives. This is hard. I don't want to keep it long. Short devotion. As I said, one of my exciting times in the church. Um, Reformation, revolution. I mean, I believe that's what Shiloh is here for. So pray for us, especially in this season. But I wanted to challenge you with a little bit about this. Sola Scriptura. The Word alone. Scripture alone. Make the Word of God a priority in your life. Let's pray this prayer as we think about the Reformation. Gracious Father, we humbly pray for your holy church, global, universal. We pray that you would fill it with all truth in all peace, where the church is corrupt, purified, where it is in error, direct it, where in anything it is amiss, reform it, where it is right, establish it, where it is in want, provide for it, where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of him who died and who rose again, and him who lives to make intercession for us, Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Lord.
Amen. And friends, I thank God for you. I thank God that you took time to watch this. I pray that you are blessed by it. And my prayer is that the living and powerful truth of God's word, his word that alone can penetrate the, you know, the falsehoods, the negativities in our hearts, in our minds. As we take that word in, I pray that it will drive out darkness and negativities and ignorance and any negative unhealthy seeds that have been planted in us and that through God's word, seeds of truth and change and transformation and reformation and revolution will be planted in our hearts, in our lives for the sake of God, for the benefit of others. So beloved, may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and God Almighty and merciful who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And so we are going to continue um, as we as we look at the 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 five solas um, for the next few days to come, today we looked at sola scriptura. Uh, tomorrow we are going to look at um, sola gracia, and so I'm hoping that you will continue to join in. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week.